All right, guys, let's see how we can uh, do automatic deployments and development using Scaffold. Uh, so we can go to the website scaffold.dev and from uh, get started, uh, we see that we have uh, installing uh, Scaffold. So basically we will need uh, to run those uh, two commands. Afterwards, we will have uh, our Scaffold executable running and placed properly in our uh, Linux path. Let's go to the command prompt and now we should be able uh, to run a scaffold uh, the command. All right, so I've chosen a project consisting of a PHP file, which I'll be changing and it will automatically create image out of it and redeploy it uh, into a container. Let's see this uh, structure in Visual Studio Code. So here is the contents of our index.php, it's just a simple PHP file. Then we have a Docker file uh, from which we are using the PHP CLI. And basically we are uh, getting everything that we have in this directory. So all those files, we are copying them into the app directory inside of the container. Then there we are changing into this directory and we are running the built-in uh, PHP web server and um, we are exposing port 4000. So this way our index PHP will be loaded when uh, we load this address inside of the container. Then uh, we have created one pod based on the container. What's specific for it is that it has a name. So this is the name of the pod, scaffold pod. It uses a container scaffold CNT. And uh, since we are running uh, an unsecure image using micro KTS, uh, we'll be using the following address, uh, localhost uh, uh, 32000, and then the name of the image we would like to build. That's basically for the uh, pod creation. The next thing uh, we'll need uh, in order to able to run a scaffold is the YAML file. And uh, this is how it looks like. The nice thing is that uh, we can generate it uh, directly in the terminal. So if I go and run the following common scaffold in it, we see that we already have a configuration, but let's say that uh, we delete this file. And again, issue the following command. And we see that we are having absolutely the same information. Uh, we would like to write uh, this into scaffold.yaml. I'll go to Visual Studio Code. And here in the scaffold YAML file, I'll just remove this dash from here. So basically we'll be looking for this image, PHP app, to be created. So this will be produced artifact. And uh, for the deployment, we'll be using our uh, pod configuration. So we'll start a pod. We'll be looking for changes uh, and rebuilding uh, for this image. Now back to the terminal, we need to adjust some more things. So the first thing is to enable the micro KTS uh, registry and then we would like to check whether it functions properly. So we'll try to browse its uh, address, its localhost on port 32000 and v2. When we see that uh, we have a response, uh, this means that uh, everything functions uh, properly and we can provide this uh, registry uh, to scaffold to be able to find our images. Before doing this, I will create a local alias. We will point micro as kubectl to be able to invoke it with kubectl because scaffold uh, is looking for uh, this command to issue and otherwise will uh, create problems uh, for us. So we are creating this alias and now we can run uh, directly kubectl and that's the output of uh, the same of micro as uh, kubectl. Now we are ready uh, to run uh, a scaffold. Basically the command is scaffold dev and since we are inside of micro KTS, we would like to set this uh, default repo towards the address of our local registry and as we can see in the beginning um, it's looking for the cache for our php app image it's not found so Scaffold is automatically building the image based on the um, provided uh, Dockerfile configuration. These are all the steps and the layer it is creating. 
then it's uh, tagging the image and uh, pushing the image directly to the uh, Kubernetes uh, registry based on Docker. Then it's creating this uh, localhost alias and also it's running our pod. Now inside of the pod we have a container where we run our uh, PHP development server and we see the output that uh, the server is started. Um, the next thing we would like to do in order to be able to uh, see the changes uh, happening inside of the pod is to create a simple port forwarding. Uh, so let's first uh, see our pods. So we'll type kubectl uh, get pods and we see that uh, we have one pod here, scaffold pod, which is our pod and it's running. With the following command, we would like uh, to port forward this pod and its open ports. And so we know that uh, we opened a port 4000 from this pod and we would like to expose it uh, to port 8080. Uh, here inside of the Docker file, we see that we are running the PHP web server and it's exposing uh, port 4000. So from the command prompt, we are doing this uh, redirect. And now we can actually browse uh, this address here in uh, our browser and it should redirect to the local port 4000 inside of our container. All right, let's see. And uh, this is the output of our image. We see hello. Now everything is set up. We have access to our container and uh, let's see the benefit of using scaffold. So we change something inside of our in this PHP file and we click on save and at the same time on the other window we'll see uh, how uh, scaffold will detect the changes. So let's save this file. And here automatically it starts the build process, creates the image, pushes it into the registry and patches our uh, deployment to be able to reflect the changes from uh, this image. Now, as you can see, it's watching for changes, but our image uh, has to start the PHP uh, server once again. So we will need to wait a little bit. And after a few seconds, we see that again, we have our uh, PHP web development server uh, started. And uh, again, we can go uh, now to our browser and refresh. And we see uh, those are the updated changes we just did. All right, guys, now you can see the power of uh, scaffold and how it can be beneficial when uh, building and deploying uh, uh, code inside of uh, Kubernetes. In case uh, this information has been useful for you, you can subscribe to the channel.